Welcome back to the Taproot Asset Demo Series. I'm Hannah with Lightning Labs, and this is a series of short demo videos walking through using Taproot Assets. And now that we have a new version of Taproot Assets with Lightning functionality, we're going to get to the video that we've all been waiting for, and we're going to demonstrate using Taproot Assets on the Lightning Network. So. Let's get right into it. Over here, I have a testnet node. This is one of the testnet nodes that I've been using all throughout this series of videos. I have changed the setup a bit. Now we are using a lit D setup. If you have any questions about that, please see the resources linked to in the video description because in this video, we're gonna focus on using assets on the Lightning Network. We're gonna open a channel. All right, so what we'll do in this video is first, we're gonna double check that we have some assets. So we're gonna go look at our assets. Then we're going to open a channel. Then we're going to create some invoices and we're going to pay those invoices. And we might get really ambitious and attempt to do a multi-hop payment, which will be a lot of fun. So let's get into it and let's start by having a look at the assets that we have available at the moment on this particular node cool so we're using tap cli here notice all these different flags tls cert path uh, rpc port and we're on the testnet here so let's have a look at what we got awesome I've been doing a lot of different testing on this node. So we have all kinds of different assets here. We are going to be using this one here, Mega Test Bucks. And I'm going to copy the asset ID because we will be using that in a number of different CLI commands. Awesome. Okay, so we have our asset ID that we're going to use to open a channel. But before we can do that, we need to have another node to open a channel with and we need to peer with that node. In this case, I'm going to be opening a channel with Leo from Lightning Labs. He has a testnet node running as well with the LitD setup and we've been testing a bunch of things. So our nodes are connected, they're peered. So I'm going to open a channel with him. But an important thing to note here, if you don't have a couple of nodes set up or someone to open a node with for testing or just to make things easier, there's this really awesome application called Lightning Polar. I'm not going to talk too much about it here because we've done a whole video uh, in the series on just how, how to use Polar. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux, and you can download this, run it on your local machine. You basically just set up a local Lightning network just using a bunch of different Docker containers. So it's really cool, really handy for testing all of this stuff locally. So everything we're doing here, you also be able to do in Polar. But... I, today, I'm going to go set up a channel with Leo, so I will show you what that command looks like. Okay, let's talk through this command. Here we're using litd CLI, lit CLI, because litd is helping us manage that connection between LND and TAPD. Uh, we're noting that we're on the test network, we're using litd's TLS cert, we are using the LND admin macaroon, and then this is the command we're using here ln fund channel. I have to note the pub key of the node that I am connecting to. So this is the pub key for one of Leo's testnet nodes. I need to state how many assets uh, I'm including in the channel. Here, just for good measure, I gave it um, some nice stats per V byte. And then of course, I need to note the asset ID that will be used to fund this channel. So let's give it a try. Awesome, there we go. So we've got a transaction ID and we can copy this and go have a look on the, you know, a testnet explorer to see how that transaction is doing. So now our channel is confirmed on chain, but before we do anything, before we send any assets back and forth to the channel, we're gonna have a look at that channel balance. So if we use this command, we're gonna do LN CLI list channels. This is an LND CLI command, but I'm just uh, you know filtering this a bit here. So I only see channels that I have with Leo's testnet node. And so we can run this and get a look at the current asset balance in our new channel. 
And lucky for us, this pops up right at the bottom here. And I can see that this is the current capacity of the channel. And this is the local balance and remote balance. So right now, I have all of the assets on my side of the channel. And we're going to generate uh, and pay some invoices. And then we'll come back and have a look at this to see how it's changed. So Leo is going to generate invoices, but we're going to look at what that command looks like before we pay his invoice. So this is what it looks like. We're using lit CLI, again, the usual flags that we would expect here. Um, and uh, we're using this command, ln add invoice. We added a helpful memo. And of course, we need to note the asset ID and the amount of it that we are requesting. So Leo is going to use that command to generate an asset invoice and send it over to me and we'll pay it. So before we pay the invoice, let's have a look at the structure of the command we'll use to pay the invoice. So this is what it looks like. Uh, lit CLI, the usual flags on here. This is the command, ln pay invoice. I'm specifying the outgoing channel. This is the new channel that I set up with Leo just now. I'm using that channel ID. This is just for good measure. Here is where the invoice will go. And then, of course, I'm specifying the asset ID that I will use to pay that invoice. So once we get that invoice from Leo, I'm just going to paste it right in here. OK, we've got that invoice. So I'm pasting it in, and we'll pay it. Yes. Awesome. So that works. It says, invoice paid, succeeded. Excellent. And we can see a bunch of information about the RFQ process, right? What that was in Satoshi's and that sort of negotiation on, you know, how much is this asset worth in SATs? And for, again, for more information on that, see uh, details in the description. All right, awesome. So now let's go and check on our channel balance and make sure that that is now updated. Hey, excellent. Look at that. Leo has received his 50,000 mega test bucks. So excellent. All right, now let's try a multi-hop payment, this time with Leo's node acting as the edge node. So what that means is that I have an invoice from a uh, Satoshi's, right, a SATS-based Lightning invoice, and I'm going to pay it using my asset, and I'm going to route this through Leo's node. So a payment's going to go from me to Leo using my mega test bucks, right? I'm going to pay this invoice using my mega test bucks, and I'm going to send that payment to Leo. And then Leo's node is going to do this, you know, exchange rate conversion, decide how many mega test bucks are worth how many Satoshis, right? And then send a payment along to another node, another testnet node of his um, using Satoshis, right? So the payment is going to go from me um, using assets, taproot assets to Leo, and then from Leo out onto the rest of the Lightning Network using Satoshis. So quite cool. So let's have a look at the command that we'll use to do that. Cool. Again, lit CLI, the usual flags. The command here is ln pay invoice. I'm again noting this channel that I'm going to use. Here is the specific invoice. This is the Satoshi's based invoice, SATS invoice, but I'm going to pay it using this asset ID. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Awesome. Look at that. So here's our amount in Satoshi's. Here's this various different information about this RFQ process. Now I am going to go have a look at the channel balance and see what's changed. Awesome. So we can see now even more assets have made their way over to Leo. So I have sent assets to Leo, and Leo has sent Satoshis out to another node on the Lightning Network. 
So this video is fairly short and simple, but very important because we can now show you that Taproot assets work on the Lightning Network, not just from one peer to another, but for multi-hop payments. So very cool stuff. And as always, don't forget to check out the docs at docs.lightning.engineering.